This video is about the Presage Exotic Quest, which you do to get the Dead Man's Tail Exotic Scout Rifle. I'm going to be doing this with a basic set of gear and a basic set of skills. So what do you need to bring? In your kinetic slot, bring something that is useful for hitting uh, short range to medium range. So hand cannon, assault rifle, maybe a pulse rifle. Um, some things are at slightly longer range, so I wouldn't go sidearm. Um, but something that hits pretty hard. In the energy slot, I really like these uh, single shot grenade launchers. Truth Teller is a pretty good one, it's pretty easy to find. You can also use Salvager Salvo, which is this season's legendary. I like this particular one because it has blinding grenades. And the reason those are useful is you're going to get charged by melee units fairly often. And this way, even if you don't kill them, you can at least stun them a little bit. In the power slot, I'm going for range. So I want the Xenophage machine gun. Some people, especially if they're doing a master run, will bring the Lament and have a build that is built around sword damage and close range survivability. I'm not going to go that route. I like hitting things at long range. It's safer. If you don't have Xenophage, I have a video that shows you how to get it. I think the quest to get it is actually easier than Presage. Um, so if you really want to do this one, I would take a few hours and just go and get this thing. Class-wise, you want a super that can do good single target damage at long range. Medium range is fine. Um, the closer you get, the, the riskier it gets, because the, the boss will smack you pretty hard up close. I've had some success with uh, Solar Hunter and Golden Gun. Uh, the way the boss moves, you've got to be good at hitting that headshot with a target that's squirming around a little bit. Machine Gun Ammo Finder, Machine Gun Scavenger to help keep Xenophage fed. Defensively, I have Solar and Concussive Resistance on. Solar is helpful for the boss and for um, some of the melee units. Concussive is pretty important because of the exploding screams. If your favorite chess piece doesn't or isn't solar, um, double concussive isn't a bad plan. Grenade launcher loader to make the uh, grenade launcher load a little bit faster. Step one, get into the ship. Exploratory outing, Presage. Designation VG-999. I am receiving you. Not finished picking at Cabal Bones? Title. Have you no more This jump's kind of a pain. You kind of got to just come up to the side. There. If you try to jump past and drift back, you end up going off into space. So this one's a little rough in a warlock. Everything else, every other class works pretty well, but you tend to scrape your head on the ceiling. If you come out here, it's a little bit easier. That was sketchy. So this switch opens the hangar door. You don't need to do it in a solo run. Okay, quick word about screebs. Screebs are the crawly, explodey things. 
but if you jump over them, they explode pretty nicely without having to shoot them. Which is good, because these orange bar ones have a whole lot of health. So the reason that works is because they don't explode the instant they get near you. When they get close, they trigger, but they vibrate a little bit before they pop. So if you run past them, or better yet, jump over them, they trigger when you get close, and then explode when you're far away from them. So you don't actually have to kill all these guys. Whoops. That one got a little close. You can't just run past them. You coming? No? Oh boy. That's gonna hurt. Yeah, I'm not doing this tremendously well. Anyway, you could just come charging up here, run straight across. Just make sure you get to a place with high ceilings. having trouble with this one on a hunter, besides adding more mobility, remember that tapping the jump is slightly different from holding the jump. You get just a teeny bit more height if you hold it, and so I found that helped when I was doing this on a hunter. Don't do that on a warlock. It goes badly. All right, the fun part. Okay, so things to know about the trash compactor. You can activate it while facing inward, which saves you a little bit of time spinning around. If things go badly, you can go to that end of the room, the other end away from the switch and just back yourself into the wall right in the center and the compactor won't actually squash you. I've seen some, you know, fairly fairly high-end gamers do this to get their solo flawless runs on YouTube. Um, I don't know if it's a bug that will get fixed someday or if the devs are just being really kind, but that's an option. So when I open this, we have to look for the vents with the glowing fuses. Always check this first row. It's really easy to blow past that and miss them. Jumping over the screeves is a little bit hard just because there's so many of them, so it's hard to find a spot to land where they don't explode. Um, this is just kind of a rough room. I tend to get blown up here. So let's do it. Okay. Checking the nearby... Don't see one there. Yikes! Okay, there's one. And I'm gone. Okay. Yeah, I still need to figure out a better way to do that room. Either I successfully dodge the Screebs and then get squashed by the compactor. Or you get killed by the Screebs. So what I'm watching for here is the walls. And the reason I'm doing that is because the walls don't reset when you die. So if you just charge right back in, you get squashed and come back up here. So I'm going to wait for it to reset. And then I'm going to head in.
Now be aware that the compactor doesn't necessarily kill all the screams. And when you come back in, you may still have to fight things. So I saw one about there. And that was all I found before I got exploded. Take two. Try to check the ones that are nearest the walls first. That's just glimmer. Okay, there's one. There's two, there's three. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. One with the red glowing dots. The walls will stop, but, you know, I like to be out of the way. Okay. I would lift you into the stars. You have never sounded more like your father. Okay, so first fight, this is uh, Revive Limited, so a little bit of planning is useful. Top priority are the pair of Orange Bar Raider snipers in the back. Those things will absolutely rip you apart. There are a few Void Chieftains. They're not too threatening. The swarm of Ravagers that come at you, on the other hand, is kind of a problem. So the trick with them is just to keep moving, and as long as the snipers are down, um, you can run around pretty effectively without getting killed. Usually. Here we go. Alright. So there is our special friend. I'm looking for that guy. There's one more. Where is he? There he is. Okay. Now these guys are melee only, so as long as you keep moving, running, jumping, don't get caught up on them, you'll do pretty fine. And just stop every once in a while, throw a grenade. You can sit up here briefly. They will find you and start damaging you before long. But mostly what you need to do is just keep running back and forth. Keep working the grenades. Alright, second group is coming in. shield pop on top of everything else. Whoops. Yeah, the nice thing about these guys is that they have to spin up their attack to be really effective. The mistake that most people make is they try to back up while shooting them, which gives them time to get close, charge up their attack, and jump on you. If you move away from them quickly and then turn around, it works a whole lot better. Alright, so let's do something about these guys. These are Void Chieftains. They make the Void Totems, which do that. Okay, let's gather up some ammo. Okay, the big hangar fight. 
Key things to know before we start. As soon as I walk in, this door is going to lock. I can't leave the room. There will be three chieftains. There'll be a void one up here with a couple of snipers. And arc one down here with three of those guys with shields. And a solar one over here, uh, again, with some more guys with shields. The void one does the void totems, which protect. The arc one does the arc totems, which are sort of like little gravity wells. The solar one creates the flame turrets. So my plan is to take out the three chieftains, starting with the one up top, because the snipers are the most dangerous part of this. Once I do that, maybe kill a couple of the shield guys, that's when the main spawn is going to happen. So you can see there's the art guy and his friends. Here's the solar guy and his friends. Once I've killed enough stuff, a couple of abominations and a whole bunch of melee guys are going to spawn in over here. Which means I want to be on this side. So I'm going to start with this chieftain. Because he tends to squirm around some. And I'm going to pop this guy. And I just need to kill a couple more to get the party started. Alright, here we go. So I got Screebs coming in up top. The Abominations have come in on the far side. A small army of guys is about to come charging at me. So what you want to do at this point is just pick off these guys. Shoot them, shoot the Screebs. If they get close, jump up and just start running. But stay in this area. Don't go to the middle, don't go to the other side. That was a move. And always keep watching your back, because more Screebs are going to pop in up ahead. Up, uh, more Screebs will pop in up top. There they come in just now. Yeah, it's. it feels like that top area should be a really safe place to hang out. Ah! What I was saying was, it should feel like that top area is a really safe place to hang out, but the Screebs come in and explode. Okay. So I'm going to fast forward this to roughly the point I was at where I got exploded and take it from there. Okay, so I think we're about caught up. In case I didn't mention it, you definitely want to shoot these rather than jump over them. They have far less health than those orange bar ones. Okay, so the abominations tend to hang out on this side or in the little middle area, so if you want to shoot them, you generally need to come over here. Smile! Oops. So now you just gotta keep hitting these guys while listening for Screebs. They have a ton of health. They hit pretty hard. 
Arc resistance would definitely help for this area. Ah. So we better aim. You notice no more screebs are coming. It seems like there's a bunch that show up and then uh, then you're done for a little while. So when I kill this abomination, everything kind of spawns back in. So I'm going to get three new chieftains. I'm going to get a whole bunch of more friends. So I kind of want to have my house in order before that happens. I'll blow up a couple of those guys, just thin the herd a little. I'd really like to have more grenade ammo. Unfortunately, the only green brick I've seen is over there. But we will make do. Okay, so I want to be on this side when I pull out Xenophage and knock that guy down. Okay, here come the friends. Hit the chieftains early and often. Watch out for screebs. And all the rest of them. And I'm out of grenade ammo. Yeah, so this is going perfectly. If you need to run across, don't run across in front. Run across and back. Okay. Doing all right. Make sure you get the snipers. I don't like to go up there and get them because screams might appear like that. Special ammo. There's a brick up here. I think it's raining bricks up here. Hallelujah. Yeah, and I got Xenophage ammo coming out the wazoo right now, so let's let's hurt some people. Oop, screebs. Uh, if you're getting chased, coming down here often works because they jump over that way. So in case you missed it, you jump off the edge, and when they chase you, they jump here first. They will get to you, but it just puts a little hitch in their path, gives you a little extra time. So I'd really like to take out that solar chieftain. I'm finding that my hands are full with everything else. All right. So I need to be able to see the solar chieftain to shoot him. Oh, there he is. Now you see him. Ah, he's back. Okay. More screebs. Alright, so I need to get into a position where I can shoot that last abomination. Don't know where the screebs went. Oh, there he is. I think there's more than one. There he is. Okay. I got my super back. Just need to clear out everything that's in the way. Yeah, the screams seem to come a lot longer in this second phase than they did in the first phase. And they're a little more, well, a little, little less direct in terms of the routes they take. All right, so I'd like to get rid of that guy. Here, kneecap. No, nope, more screebs. Where's he going? Dude, I'm over here. Alright. What I'm trying to do is get lined up for a shot with my super that's not going to miss. 
or leave me exposed or exploded. And it isn't gonna target a Screeb instead. He keeps wandering around near cover. That might work. Outstanding. Uh, how about a grenade? Yeah, that did some good. Maybe one of these. Maybe some of this. Okay, so enemies do not disappear when the abomination goes down. So make sure you have successfully killed everything before you relax. My dog is very excited about this. Okay, so we're going to have to deal with a few more Screebs. If you want to jump over them, I would come back to here rather than trying to do it up there. I just ended up with that. Yeah, the full body tackle maneuver. So in this room, remember that you can move back, which can be an easier way to deal with these guys. Because then you can do your leaping. Ah, yeah, that was a poor choice. I was going to say you can do your leaping without getting shot at, but yeah, that did not work out well at all. The other option is to come up here, dodge a few bullets, get the Screeps to chase you, and then float out this way, which is what I usually do, and I will do in the future, because that plan sucked. All right. And can I miss all my shots? Nope, I cannot miss all of my shots. If you're an avoid hunter, you can actually skip that entire fight. You just keep going in and out of stealth. Okay. So this room, you come down facing this one. You don't want that one. You want the double grates on either side. Now, what some people like to do is they like to get the buff, charge down here, Hang a left, jump over the screen. There's kind of an easier way. You just let them blow up.
That said, it's actually pretty easy. I mean, it doesn't look like it should be because this hallway is so low, but as long as you don't smack into them, it works just fine. These guys are a little hard to avoid. And actually, this is the room I was thinking of running out of, not the other one. So let's put that to the test. Ah. Yeah. So this is a little bit more of an airy space, and it works a little bit better. Friends coming. Bye-bye. Missed. Alright, so this switch you don't actually have to hit. So behind this door is another set of spores. Once you get around the corner into the pre-boss area, there's another switch that will open these doors so that if you're in a group of three, the first person through needs to do this little bit of parkour, and the next two can just run up here and get the spores and run straight in. So you don't actually need to hit that switch. That's the switch to open that other panel. You can drop the flag if you want. If not, it is boss time. Let's see, anything to say about the boss? Eh, not really. We'll talk it through as we go. Okay. So here's our special friend. You gotta beat him up a little bit to send him down under. He's got this ranged fire thing that he really telegraphs the heck out of. And he's got a really nasty melee slam, so you don't want to get too close. Fun time. Kill that guy quickly. If you don't, if you really end up boxed in tight, you want to get this area clear so you've got a place to sit while you fight the rest of them. So you're going to have these three solar chieftains. They create the little flame turrety things. For this part, I like to come up here. I feel like it gives me a slightly better angle. Alright, fine. Have it your way. Can 
as soon as these guys go down, five more spawn in. There'll be two next to each console on the outside, and one on the console in the middle. Coolant flush two. So in theory, you have to go all the way around and activate the console. In practice, you can actually stand about here. So actually just hold the activate button down, run in. Boom. Yeah, it's a, a fairly generous range on that one. Okay, now the fun part. Key mechanic in this is jump back up without dying. It is amazing how often you'll do this and miss, bang your head, whatever. Um, it's a thing. I've seen it done a lot. This side has this little pipe over here. You can sit on it, get a slightly better angle if you want to bounce grenades down. But mostly what you're going to do is you're going to come down. Ho! Oh, teleport! And that's not going to work. Jump, jump, jump! Okay, so that just illustrated two things. One was the magically teleporting boss, which is a bug, and it's really, really annoying. The other was the fun involved in jumping. And he teleported away. I think. Now, he's down there somewhere, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run to the other side. And that's kind of how this one goes. You line up a shot, put some xenophage on him, he runs toward you, you throw a little bit of that, got him. Next phase starts. Do not use your grenade downstairs because you want to use your grenade here. Again, take this guy out. Clear a nice zone. Reset. He's got Screebs coming. that shot. Hmm. That's better. All right, and just start picking them down. I don't know if you can hear it in the audio, but I can kind of hear the boss. If you hear the boss or you see little flame icons, it means he's on this side and you want to go down on the other side. Okay, I don't have my super yet. He may have some friends. Yes, he's got some chieftain friends that I want to remove. Let's 
see what I got on the other side. Yeah, the little ones aren't really worth a uh, CDFH shot unless you're dripping with ammo. These guys, whoops, teleport! Yeah, I find it helpful to kind of stand at an angle just to be able to see upward while I jump. Yeah, that teleport is just the worst. Even if you don't get clobbered, it still has a really good chance of making you miss with your super. Speaking of super... Alright, so he's got more ads spawning. Actually, I didn't want to... I don't want to bust out the heaviness yet. Shoot! Should have busted out the heaviness. So, as you do this, um, as you damage the boss, as are going to start to appear. They will appear above, they will appear below. Anytime you hear the sound of something spawning in, you need to jump out and deal with the adds before you damage the boss any further. You always want to make sure that you've got a safe place to come. Okay, so that near-death experience was very exciting. Um, I did manage to get my super off, so that's cool. He's got a couple more of these chieftain types. All right, more spawn. Let's come up, deal with that. I'm just going to pop you in the face, because that was nasty last time. Okay, so he's still pretty far from the next third. I haven't hit him all that hard. Ah, oh, chieftain. I'm just going to keep on hammering him. And just clear out when it gets nasty. So he's really close to going. I think one more hit ought to do it. I've got a video that shows the importance of not sticking around for too long. Okay, melee charge. Love those blinding grenades. Yeah, so you're gonna get a big bunch of those guys charging at you. Fortunately, the grenades made pretty short work of them.
Okay. Last boss phase. He's going to get a bunch of ads coming in. So we need to be moving in and out with some frequency. And here they come. And these are going to be a lot heavier. You've got the chieftains. You've got a big bunch of melee guys. Oops. That was one I didn't want to miss. All right, so I'm going to run over here. So a lot of times they will take the long way around, which gives you just a little bit more time. Disappointed my grenade work today. All right, I want to finish cleaning up these guys before I go back down. All right. So last time I was over there, coming back here, I have my super. Let's see what we got. All right, guys are coming in. That means I get out. Anybody up here? No? All right. That's cool. Take out the chieftains. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Got more guys up here. I'll try that for size. Try not to get boxed in. Come up here, make them go around. Yeah, that's, that's really the nasty part of this one, is when you pop back up, and there's a bunch of those melee guys. Fortunately, the boss is now on just a sliver. If I can actually get a beat on him. Yeah, don't stop shooting till they stop coming. Because not all of them will disappear when the boss dies. I believe I found a record of first contact with this voice. It says, I offer scribe of Glycon. Rejoice. The score now one. Rejoice. <coughs> they bear the weight of the crown elegantly. Rejoice. They whisper anticipation. Rejoice. Our emperor hears the voice of salvation. I don't know why they have such a long wait in there. I think they just timed it so that every possible set of dialogue will complete before the mission and timer pops. So you just kind of end up sitting there for a little while, and it, it feels a little weird, but it does, in fact, end eventually. And that's it.